All right. Now, um, I'm running at like 60 frames right now because we have been playing the Avengers game. I will have a video coming soon on that and uh, talking about my experience playing that beta um, and um, let you guys know my thoughts about the gameplay and, and everything else. Now, we're going to move to a more serious topic today. And um, look, there's a, there's a lot of problems with this. and oh, More so, I don't want to say problems. Let's just say there's a lot of layers to what had happened, right? It's, it's a whole lot of layers to, to what, what took place. And I think they all need to be discussed because it's worth discussing. Now, this man, his name is Ryan Whitaker. He's out of Arizona. And if you have been paying attention to me on social media, um, you had saw me talk about it. I did say I was going to do a video, and here's the video. But he's out of Arizona, and he was shot and killed by the police. Um, I believe the date is May 21st, okay? So you probably hadn't heard about it, because I didn't hear about it until recently. And someone brought it to my attention and wanted to know my thoughts. Um, I, that's not an accident as far as what you had, you know. If, if you hadn't heard about it, I didn't really see any mainstream bigger sources i saw a lot of local news stuff um and them talking about it but it, obviously it's not getting a whole lot of let's say it's not getting a spotlight and there's a reason why it's not getting a spotlight and you can draw your conclusions there but basically what happened was a neighbor called the police on uh you know his family or his his uh his uh his his, his spot and it was a noise complaint. Now, the person had called 911. And it's odd because he is frustrated, obviously. And I can empathize with that. Frustrated that, you know, if there is a noise complaint, you have to get, you know, you got to get to work. I can understand why you'd be frustrated at that. But what happened was the neighbor was answering all the questions to the dispatcher, like, really fast because they wanted he, you know, he obviously wanted them to get there, the cops to get there, and actually asking about this being a physical dispute that's happening inside of the home. He says, uh, in response, he said, it could be physical. I could say, yeah, if that makes anybody hurry and up, uh, get anybody here faster. So he's basically like, yeah, I'm willing to lie um, if that means that you guys get here and, and solve the problem. Now, again, I know that that's a frustrating thing to do. But what it does show us is, and we'll kind of wrap this up, um, uh, bring this home, it highlights how it doesn't take much to get killed by the police, right? It, it really doesn't. It really doesn't. I'm not saying that it happens all the time, but it doesn't take much. And it's not a, a issue minor enough that won't, uh, that can ultimately end in your death, right? And it's something we're talking about. Um, but he says, uh, and basically what, ha what actually ended up happening was Ryan, and I have a post about this on both all forms of my social media. Ryan and his lady, they were out making, um, they were just out actually just making salsa and playing Crash Bandicoot. So the cops show up and the body cam was released recently. And I'll talk about that in a minute. But what happened was the cops, what it looks like, the cops showed up. They did announce themselves. But because there's all types of stuff going on inside, they probably didn't hear. You could barely even hear it through the body cam. So they couldn't hear it. And then they're standing kind of like on both sides of the door, the cops, right? So if you were looking through the peephole, you really couldn't see them, right? Um, so obviously they knocked. That was heard. That was felt. And uh, he answers the door. Ryan answers the door. And this is Ryan, by the way, in this picture. So Ryan answers the door and he has his gun on him, right? Um, it's in, the, in his right hand. And um, they flashing like flashlights in his face, all kinds of stuff. And he answers the door with his gun, which is a personally, person, personally, it's a reasonable response, if you ask me. Because if it's, by the way, this is like at in the middle of the night. Somebody knocks on my door and they had said that, you know, someone had knocked on the door like that last week. Uh, but, you know, that's a reasonable thing. It's the middle of the night. Who in the hell is knocking on the door in the middle of the night, right? 
Yes, I'm answering it with my damn gun. He says, uh, but yeah, then one of the officers I was just seeing the gun says, yells hands. And this is where it gets weird. Um, is that Jeff Cook, who's one of the officers, like he's clearly complying. And he's about he's getting on his knees about to put the gun down, right? Not going at anybody. He gets shot in the back by the cop. He's dead. It sounds that bad, but if you actually look at the body cam, it's worse. So imagine that. I explained that to you just now. It's worse if you actually see the body cam. It's worse. So um, the, in the press conference, he said that he pulled a gun. Well, no, no, not in the press conference. Hold on. Uh, I'm kind of going through my notes here that when I posted this. But his girlfriend was obviously on the scene, like, why did you shoot him and all of this stuff? I mean, it's it's a really sad story, by the way. And uh, Cook says he pulled a gun on us, ma'am. Like, what are you talking about? And like I said, the body cam footage was released almost two months. It was like 55 days after this event had happened. Um, and it was, like I said, it was worse than what it, what you thought. It's just murder. I'm gonna call it what it is, plain and simple. It's not even it's not even like as cut and dry as I know some people are going to make it again. We're gonna talk about all of that. Um, and the, as of today, there has been no rest arrest that I'm aware of. Um, and 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 all right. So like I said, there's layers to this. Let's first and foremost talk about the story itself. Okay, this is absolute tragedy. But it's a, it, it shows, it highlights the problem it is that when you talk about police and them responding to certain things and how it could easily get you killed. And I talk about how, I talk about this all the time. I even talked about this was like masks and stuff like that. What people don't seem to take into consideration when it comes to the police, right? They they act as if, well, if, if like, it, all right, well, it's something so minor, and they think that because it's something so minor, the police would never kill someone over that. There is nothing minor enough that they won't kill you over. If you get the wrong guy at the wrong time, wrong cop at the wrong time, they will kill you. And in an unfortunate cases, be justified to do it. Now, I know there are a lot of cop worshippers uh, out there. Some of them follow me and they get really riled up when I talk about situations like this um, because they they generally side with the cop like any and every every time. Uh, I actually told, I did a video a while back. It's titled like conservatives should reconsider their blind support for like military and, and cops. I mean, and it'll be people like, well, yeah, we, you know, uh, and when they're in the era, right, they're, they're going to be criticized. I support the criticism. And then these people will still find each and every way to not condemn the cops, even on this case right here, which is about as cut and just dry as you're going to get. They're still, you look at my post, on this people that are justifying it because they always feel like the cop is right. It's like they always talk about compliance, compliance, compliance. And what it does is it robs other individuals of the agency. First of all, someone answering the gun, answering the door with a gun is per perfectly reasonable. I don't give a damn who's at the door. I talked about this when with the whole Breonna Taylor and his boyfriend that was there and the boyfriend, which I did end up, I think they end up dropping the charges. Uh, but the boyfriend shoots at the cops. And people were like, well, why did he shoot at the cops? Like, bro, someone bust through the damn door of the apartment. And they had a spot to use he's in. Just because they the cops don't mean they they don't like once someone can't practice their their like right to said gun ownership. Right? Like it's a it's a perfectly perfectly reasonable response. And yes, it may end up in them getting shot, but it is what it is. Because you pulling up on someone else's crib, why should you be given the benefit of the doubt? Definitely when, obviously, they may, and again, they may have been going into it thinking that, I don't know. Uh, it doesn't really sound that way because I believe you, you hear one of them say, I don't have time for this. But, you know, let's just assume that they really thought it was a violent domestic dispute going on. And this is why some people are saying that the person that called 911 should be held liable as well. But... This whole idea of the shut up, comply. It's a very dangerous thing to say, but it does show the great lengths that people will go to defend the cops. Just so they don't want them to be in there. So it's like, just follow everything it is that they do as if 
That's what you're supposed to do. Um, and then if you, and it's like, okay, well, he, you don't do that. And if they fear for their life, these are supposed to be trained, very trained uh, professional individuals in terms of what are they doing. And they fear for their life, even though a guy man's getting on the damn ground. They can shoot. And I understand that uh, if you do, or if you are in a situation, like you got a split second to deal with it, and then you know my life may get taken. But this isn't clear. This is clearly one of those where that wasn't the case. But I understand that. I can empathize with that. Like, okay, well, you 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 don't have much time to try to decipher because as a regular individual, you don't you have don't have much time to try to decipher if this person gonna kill me or not. Definitely, if the other person has a gun. But this ain't one of those cases. And if they are in error, they still are in error. This was an unfortunate situation. I y'all hear the lawnmower in the background. I apologize for that. It's like every time I'm about to record a video, these fools show up. But this was a tragic, absolutely tragic story. And I'm, it's so unfortunate that I didn't hear about it. Um, body cam came out, and then I started hearing. I mean, the, then the, the family had been raising, raising hell. But it, and it's not that, well, hold on, let me backtrack. Now, there are going to be those types, right? I'm trying to criticize multiple angles here. Because I you know the cop warship is going to do what the cop warships chippers do. But talking about the people who are going to say, who, who support like rioting and, 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 and the protesting and, and stuff of that nature, they're going to say, well, this is why you should be out there with us. They said this with the when people brought up like uh, the Daniel Shaver thing or brought up Duncan Limp. And then they're like, uh, oh, well, that's you should be out here with us. Like, no, first of all, no, I'm no, no, not even obligated to do that. You're still stupid. What you do still can be a, a big time waste of time. And no one does it, the, the, you know, take away from the fact that you guys do shit that gets people caught in a crossfire. Right. Um, as far as these protesters and destroying people's property and, and stuff like that, that does not justify this. And I have no issue saying that. And I'm a, a guy that's generally against the state um, all the time. Right. And uh, I do recognize that, for one, I think protesting in 2020 is marching and stuff like that is the dumbest damn thing you can do. We don't live in the days of um, of uh, of that getting anything done um, as far as awareness and making people know, uh, like just trying to make the situation, put eyes on the situation. That's not necessary anymore. Like that, We're, we're long past that. You can post something up uh, on, on Twitter and have everybody in the w- world know about it. Without having so the awareness thing, and this is why there's been no solutions. Y'all been marching in some cases because it's George Floyd thing for the last I don't know, sixty days, right? I know in the case of like the Upper West Coast over there in Portland and stuff, and got nothing out of it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, because that's not it, it's not bringing about solution. More so, it's just y'all fools going through the motion, feeling like y'all are part of something. And this is why it's generally it just came became like a signal thing. Like people just oh I want to be a part of something. March, March, Black Lives Matter, Defa the police, and all this other stupid stuff that that was ended up being a fraud. But you can be just as effective doing something else. And if you are going to do something in which you gather with each other uh, as other individuals, just sitting there marching and yelling and shouting, ain't doing nothing. So yes, I can acknowledge the fact that you're stupid. That doesn't mean that people are obligated or should be joining you in your effort, considering definitely the fact that your stuff is attached to other stupid shit. Nonetheless, there is a problem here. Um, I, I do think that it's not an accident you didn't hear about it, and it has nothing to do with people lack of protest and a riot. That's not what it is. Just the people that would generally cover some and be all over this nonstop, just aren't over it nonstop. And you can look at this man and you know why that's the case. Because if it wasn't the case, you fo- you show sure enough here about it. This actually is way worse than the George Floyd thing. And I'm not, ju- obviously I'm not justifying that. Go see my videos on that. But this is worse than the George Floyd thing. Now why did you hear about it? You know. You know exactly why. And because of that, I always say that the reason why I would never join these efforts, right? Your stupid marches and stuff like that. And just because you shout Black Lives Matter and you you put a slogan out there. I would never support these idiotic movements because they lose sight. Uh, First of all, their solutions are generally bogus. uh, But they lose sight of what the actual problem is. And that's the state. 
I mean, in the state, I mean, the territorial monopoly on use of force, violence, and ultimate decision making. That's the problem. When you have an institution like this, and this is the way they go about solving issues, this is the problems that you, these are the problems that you get. And they've they've uh, been given this authority to do this. Um, no matter how many errors they make, there's no general competition in that regards um, because they have monopolized said law. And yes, there you can you know we talk about the the neighbor, right? The person that called them and, and the errors that they made. But the reason why I don't like it when folks get lost in this and they get so caught up in this racial bull crap. Because like I say, it, it forces you to lose sight of what's going on and the problem that's taking place. So why the dumb crap with, oh, Joe Jorgensen, Libertarian Party, candidate saying that we should support these movements and support these protesters. No, they don't got, they don't got the right ideas just because you acknowledge something individually in, in an in issue is, is wrong. Doesn't mean you know why it's wrong. These fools would not be griping if they felt that races were having their asses whooped by way of the state or killed by the state in an equal amount, period. That's the only reason that movement exists is because they think that it happens to particular, let's say, non-white people more than it happens to other, which it doesn't. Um, certainly in this case, you just don't hear about these types of stories. It happens, it happens way more often than what you think. You just don't hear about those types of stories. But this damn thing is 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 something else, right? And it's a it's a problem. It's a problem. Uh, and it's it, it, it it's it's an extension of other problems. Like believe it or not, this is connected to all the other issues that we're even dealing right now with lockdowns and stuff. This is the state at work. And again, by overemphasizing race, what ends up happening is that you lose sight of what the actual problem is. And this is why it's never a decentralization is never an actual uh, uh, marketized forms of, of security, marketized forms of, of, of conflict resolution. These are not generally on the table. Like the defund police, for example, was a fuck, was a complete fraud. Right. So, it was, hey, we want to take the funds, reroute it to the woke police. That was it. Never had anything to do with putting power back in the individuals. Because, and, that, and that stuff exists the way that it does because these people don't actually understand the problem. And this is why I say I'm not obligated to support their movement. This is why I would hope libertarians to get in the forefront and start leading. They should be supporting us, not the other way around. We the ones with the ideas. We know what the true problem is. They don't. Like I say, if, if, they, if they saw, and again, it happens more often than than what they think. But if they thought that this was a case, it was white folk, black folks, brown folks, what have you, we're all getting their asses whooped by the cops, the movement ceased to exist. Now, some people will say, well, this is why y'all should be raising hell. This is why y'all should be burning this MF to the ground like us. Because see, y'all say, it's, it's like people trying to guilt trip you and support it. See, see, see. Obviously, they never reciprocate. They don't. They're not highlighting this either. Nonetheless, this is a problem. But it's a status problem. And the issue is with the state. This is why I said when y'all had y'all gripes, the whole George Floyd thing. Only the people that were taking it to the actual institution were only folks who I say I right, bet the other fools taking it to businesses and stuff like that. No, you're a criminal. <laughs> you're wrong. you're the wrong. I don't give a damn that you mad. Oh, well, well, that's how they express themselves. Oh, that's how children act. They lash out like that. When you can't even direct your frustration to the person that's doing, the, that's actually uh, creating the issue. They actually killed someone. But there's so many different angles, so many different layers. One of my, I'm almost 20 minutes into this damn video, man. I probably should have did one of my script videos on this. But there's so many different layers on this. This was a problem. This was wrong. The cops were objectively wrong. The people that called the cops need to be conscious, and they're not, unfortunately, conscious of when you call them, someone can get killed. It doesn't matter how minor the situation is. Like I say, I empathize, sympathize with the fact that, okay, this is what the person had claimed. I got to get up to work in the morning. These fools yelling and playing Crash Bandicoot. 
I don't like that. I can understand the problems that that creates, right? So I, I empathize with that. But you got to be conscious of the simple fact that in terms of how the state operates, anything that they do can get them in the, in the way. And it's not just with this qualified immunity stuff. It's it, 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 I understand that that's a part of it. But it, it, it's more so in the agency and what they do and, and how we're expected to respond to them as if they are gods. So no matter what, you got to listen to them. You can't you can't even practice your own form of self-defense, which you could practice against another individual when it comes to that institution. It's always it's follow everything that they say, do everything. And these even out of this situation, you got people like, well, he was in the wrong. Well, he had a gun. That dog it's just like. Like the person doesn't have a right to defend himself, something like that. She, Waking up, uh, not waking up, but it's the middle of the damn night. You knocking on someone's door and you don't expect them to have a have gun in their hand, man. Come on, bro. So you got those. They I mean, frustrate me so much that people are just at any given chance, no matter what, they'll defend, they'll defend the cops. And you get those who will use this as, of course, as a situation that, well, this is why you support Black Lives Matter. No. That organization is a joke. The movement is a damn joke. And a lot of these people missed the, completely missed the issue. And I'm not obligated to acknowledge your F-ups. And like I said, people like me who are against the state consistently, not just when it's convenient. Like I said, you get these same crackheads that support uh, these movements, these marches and stuff like that and lockdowns uh, at the same damn time. Right? So it ain't got, and they'll, they'll snitch on you, call. They have no problem saying, me, oh, Black Lives Matter. I'll snitch on your ass to the law boys in the event you ain't covering your face. Because they don't recognize the problem. Like I gotta say, that's another a, a, a dude, yes, somewhere you ain't killed over that. A cop goes to enforce a mass mandate, and it's a situation. Imagine this was a freaking noise complaint, bro, and it ended up getting them killed. Yes, it can happen. And maybe these fools ain't going to realize how stupid this is until that happens. But yes, it can happen. This is why I'm spitting all over the damn place. But this is why. This is why, like, <clears throat> so many folks like the Libertarians are so against this. We know that those conflicts you're creating, <laughs> you're incentivizing conflict, man, with the police. And generally, that doesn't work. Like I said, all it takes is the wrong guy, the wrong situation. Oh, you had your gun on you. I fear for my life. Bang, bang. Calling cops on someone can get someone killed. And like I said, it's not a law small. It's not a law small enough, minor enough. That, again, wrong cop, wrong day, wrong situation. And that's your ass. You are going to be killed or severely hurt or locked up or. But. It's it's it's, it's a, it, like he, the cops were I want to say set up for failure. That's not the that's not the right term. Um, But the cops were the the guy that called them like he and he. I ain't even going to say to be fair. He's not even thinking about that because y'all don't think about that. When y'all think about these mandates, a lot of y'all crackheads don't think about that either. Y'all don't think about that. Like, whoa, if I'm calling the cops on someone, no matter what, no matter if they if they planned on just taking me to jail or trying to defuse the situation or what have you, no matter what I wanted them to do, if I call the cops on someone, it could get them killed. They don't think about that. This should be a cut and dry situation, but I feel like I'm going to be doing multiple videos. That's why I'm going to go ahead and end it right here. I know I'm going to end up doing multiple videos. I'm going to read the comments, y'all. Oh, no, they was justified. So let me go ahead and end it there. This is cut and dry. It was wrong. Um, I'm, I'm doing this video because I want you to know about it. Um, I'm not telling you to join these crackhead ass movies. No, they, they don't have a point just because this happened. Stuff like this has been happening for I don't know how long. And I've been covering it for I don't know how long. This is a problem. But that don't mean what they doing is the solution. That don't mean what they doing is doing damn, damn anything, right? 
And maybe that's a video that we'll get to and start talking about solutions. Obviously, decentralization and privatization of these services is something that um, I've gone into detail with. I did a video, for example, about complete privatization of the police, uh, meaning more so of the services that they claim to do. I did a video like five years ago about that. Uh, but I need to start doing more content about that as well. So uh, maybe we'll do But this video is getting too long. So peace.